and anytime the church doors are open. So um, I want to say thank you to PEN America uh, also for having me, Sister Betty Sims, um, and Anthony Marshall, Kimberly Sawyer for sure, but thank you to PEN America for thinking enough of me as a community member uh, and a representative of St. Luke to share a little bit about, about me uh, outside of my political work. Um, so, I, as I said, we joined here in the fall, summer or fall of 2020. Um, and it's been a real honor to be a part of a church that is socially driven, um, socially active, um, and certainly with our PSAM ministry, political uh, social and social action ministry, um, always very active in the community. Um, this opportunity, though, it feels especially uh, meaningful given my background. My dedication to storytelling and advocacy led me to earn a bachelor's degree in telecommunications with an emphasis in broadcast journalism um, from Texas Southern University. And so I think that deserves a hand clap because we have about HBCU's hand clap. And that came ironically after enrolling and enrolling in an attending Spelman College as a biology pre-med wow. <laughs> And so I like to, you know, today was career day in the district, in the, one of our district schools. And I like to tell, I want to tell you like I told the kids, you know, I didn't have it all figured out at 19 and 20 and 21. And I went there planning to be a doctor. Um, I had no intention of getting into politics. Um, but I began my journalism career in public television at PBS headquarters and, and later continued. Is this on? Yeah, it's it's like it's it's it felt yeah. like it went out. Yeah. I, that's a good communications yeah. degree. Um, <laughs> right there. Um, but literally, I, I began my career in um, public television at WETA, at PBS headquarters first and then in, in Arlington, Virginia, um, and then uh, WETA in Washington, D.C. Uh, and when I got to Washington, one of my first jobs was as an intern with somebody that some of you might know of or know, but Pluria Marshall with the National yes. Association of Black Journalists. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and I want to tell you something, especially for the young people in here, it was an unpaid internship. <laughs> and I was glad to have it because I was fresh out of Texas Southern and hey, I didn't care that it didn't pay much. I, I, I didn't think it was paid at all. And, yep. But I was glad to have it. And of course, with Pluria Marshall Sr., you know, at the helm, I, I knew the opportunity, right? So, um, you know, I grew up, I wanted to, I had my, my staff do some research for me because there's so many black papers that I grew up, you know, really um, in tune with in Houston. But upon turning, returning to Texas from Washington, I worked for KCEN TV, six in production, was later uh, promoted to the news department, um, and eventually landed at KERA, here, back here in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. I believe in using communication as a tool for change. This foundation in journalism ignited a passion for the freedom of expression, understanding the importance of media literacy and necessity of equitable access to information. And, and of course, it led me to some debates now on the House floor when it comes to banning books and things like that. I'm certainly fighting for that. I was just sharing with uh, some people here that are here with us tonight about <coughs> how I was recently purging books at home and came across a book that I knew would not be allowed, mm. you know, and, and, I, and I held on to it because I was like, this is a book that would not be allowed in our library mm. today. Um, but, you know, those are the types of things that, that I did before I was ever a te Texas state representative. Um, some of some of the members of the Houston Black Press, because I grew up in Houston, and I, I just wanted to share some of those with you that I had my staff pull up for me. But because um, I knew, of course, the Houston Defender and the Forward Times, uh, the Houston Sun, uh, 
the Houston Call, Metropolitan, Freedman's Journal, and uh, U.S. Africa Weekend. But when I moved here to Dallas, I came across my sister um, that certainly uh, runs Texas Metro News, that you'll get to hear from, and the Garland Journal, and you know, papers like the Dallas Weekly uh, here in Dallas. And, and, and Cheryl uh, will tell you that I always have an ad in the black papers. Um, because with, as y'all say, disinformation, um, you know, some of us might say misinformation, but certainly disinformation um, is our reality. And as we, um, as fact checking becomes more and more our reality, we have to be aware of the remarkable things that I have found out and that I'm certainly learning more about in America and what you all are doing. Um, your advocacy and efforts that supports, give support for writers, Faces facing threats exemplifies your profound impact on our world, and especially when it comes to the word. So I, I just want to say thank you for this opportunity because I think there are a few things that some of my family and members and friends in the room didn't really know about my background. <clears throat> um, and I know Cheryl knows I approach her often, like Cheryl, I need to write a column, like I need to <laughs> I do something. <laughs> with uh, the degree that my parents paid for and the talents that I certainly <laughs> believe that, that God gave me. So I thank you for this opportunity. I welcome you all to St. Luke, those of you that are here uh, to hear more. And I do believe this is a crucial conversation, um, very important one that we're gonna have tonight. And I can't wait for you all to get started. So I'm, Henry, I'm gonna hand it back on over to you.